This is the Build OGM call for Tuesday, September 14, 2021. Um, and I, I found a fungus face image to, <laughs> to signify the building of OGM kind of, you know, that's what it looks like down in the, in the salt mines. Hey, Marc Antoine. Hello. Bonjour. Uh, Vincent, as he said in the Mattermost, uh, is going to show us some stuff that he's been building. And Pete, I apologize. Uh, do you have any time later today to get together and uh, do the insertion of Trove into the OGM website? Uh, yes. Uh, we actually have our standing call today. Um, oh, that sounds great. We could even do that. We could even do that. That's awesome. Cool. Um, anyone want to check in on on relevant stuff? Uh, upgrade your iOS and macOS devices ASAP. Because of the security breaches yeah. and stuff? Uh, it's a zero click um, exploit, which you're probably not a target, but you don't need to. Yeah, I don't need the, don't need the extra risk. And it's also <laughs> um, laptops also vulnerable, Mac OS? Yeah. yeah. OK. And it's already upgraded, of course. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not an iPhone person, so don't do that. Um, I, 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 so I think I got my iPhone a week into iPhone availability. So I wasn't in the first lines, but, but you know, a, a week later, I went and got it. And then I had a speech in uh, Paris to give. And so I um, took a flight, and I got, nearly got to passport control off the flight and realized that my brand new iPhone was in the sleeve of the seat in front of me back on the, on the airplane. And this was at uh, Charles de Gaulle, I think. And there's like streams of people, right? So, so I find a flight attendant who was on my flight who was walking next to me like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And she swam upstream, uh, found the phone and met me in front of passport control. And I was like, wow. And then I, and then I took it to the, to the meeting, gave a speech and then basically showed off the iPhone and it was passed around like a holy object. It was really kind of cool. And that was the original iPhone that felt like a river stone. Like, like they've never gotten the feel like that again. Uh, they haven't, they haven't been able to sort of like just go back to beautiful to touch. Um, and so, so it's, it's a fun story back in, and of course, I don't remember if it worked. I don't think it worked in your, like, I might have been able to get on GSM networks. I don't remember. Don't remember if it actually acted as a phone while I was in Paris. That uh, can't tell. Maybe it was just yeah, like a, a pretty stone. The point. Yeah, pretty stone that lit up and had little chiclets, chiclet buttons on it. Anyway, um, so on the on the, uh, just sort of before um, Vincent gets here. On the theme of build OGM, uh, should I just launch weaving the web as a thing, as a podcast, just like makeshift and start now and record and then and then build as we go kind of thing? And I'm just torn on it because I think I think that that's and what I'm tempted to do is to take the hour after the Wednesday generative commons calls or to replace the generative commons calls. Um, with this as a regular schedule and then do other sort of pop-ups around it. But I have a feeling that, that weaving the web is, a, is, a, is an external marker that will be useful. So does that make sense? Doesn't, doesn't not make sense. Um, have a plan. Because so, everything is a plan. Yep. So what are you trying to accomplish with it and, and how will you make that happen? I'm trying to stand up the, the, the the almost intentionally non-polished beginnings of multiple shows that run in parallel, feeding the big fungus. Um, and Stacy, our conversation about the big game and other sorts of things would, might, might be a parallel show. Um, Jordan might have a show, I don't know. I mean, the, the, you know, but, but I'd like to stand at the beginnings of it to start to flesh out what that is and how it works. Um, so, and, so then ideally those few sentences would be written down somewhere for yep. system. <laughs> And then, yep. you know, in a week or two or a month or two or whatever, here's how it's going. Um, okay. You know, talk, talk to the people who, you know, ought to, ought to know about it, ought to have input, things like that. That sounds great. Um, yes, Stacey. Can I add one more thing that might be parallel? Because, like, we had that email, on that email chain, there was an interesting conversation. And actually, Pete came in and he 
said what the different possibilities, it was about the IP. And part of when I'm always thinking about this alternative place that also has a social component, it's I'm looking for where would I want to go to learn? And it occurred to me that we should be thinking, where do we want to hang out? And the reason I'm bringing that up is this idea of learning together. I would love a show, <laughs> a call, where whatever question comes up, we actually learn together, like the example of that um, IP chain. And I have others in mind, but to that point, because I'm always thinking about education, I just want to throw in that idea of, imagine if we had all these journalism students, and we also had all these, I mean, I know that on Facebook, I have... I'm connected to so many brilliant academics, teachers, professors. Imagine if other really established people were guiding them and we were creating the stories to look for. Then it's like we're doing something that we're socially driven to do, but we're also doing something that needs to be done. And, I, you know, you guys got to connect the dots. I'm just throwing out all my thoughts. They all connect. I'm just not presenting it that way because I don't have time. It, um, it, it reminds me of some of the calls that we, we have. Um, they're maybe a little less structured than, than you're thinking, but we also do a lot of learning together. So FJB calls are like that. So TILA calls are like that, actually. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of reintegrating the Venn diagram. I have a little riff where I say that long ago, we used to learn, play, and work all at the same time. And that we, we, as we got civilized, we separated those. And now we have a portion of your life where you learn and then you stop learning and then you go to work and you're not supposed to be, have fight, you're not supposed to really learn except for in the professional development section of where you're doing your job. Otherwise you're just supposed to be hammering away at doing it like seriously. Um, and so if we can actually be playful while learning, while actually making a living and doing work, that would be really, really, really great. And if that can be of service to other communities, and if the artifacts we're building are useful for education, for, for learning, then fantastic. And, you know, lather, rinse, repeat, I think. Um, is there a reason why that, uh, sorry, I, I take that as a given. For me, that just sort of works. Is there a reason why that's not a good uh, sort of uh, image or, or force to have in the background? Does that rub anybody wrong? What, the Venn diagram? Yeah, yeah. To, to have fun while we learn, while we, while we like do stuff that helps us make a living. I, I would just like the, the more um, directed approach. Like I would love to, to know that on Thursday, we're either going to explore this or we're going to explore this, or we're going to do both. And then we could sign up for which one we want to be a part of. And then maybe some actions will come out of it because maybe the question will be is, well, we need to look up and find out who was there in 1980 at this meeting? And then maybe somebody could be assigned to do that. Um, makes sense. And, and all, what that also means is just having an agenda for where each of the events, each of the shows, each of the calls is going. And you know that, that, that's fun and totally doable. So, um, and that, that needs to go on the project plan is what I'm thinking. Um, any other thoughts? I'm remind, you spoke of Venn diagram, I'm reminded of uh, Dave Pollard. Uh, it's one of the, he has an interesting blog going at it forever called How to Save the World. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it is actually quite doomist in some ways, but it's like, what to do? <laughs> and um, yeah, and he had one of those Venn diagrams about how to find your passion and finding your uh, your sweet spot and the intersection between uh, what is it passion uh, <coughs> your passion your genius and your purpose yeah he's got a book the, the finding the sweet spot the natural <laughs> entrepreneur's guide to responsible sustainable joyful work yep exactly and, the uh, ten fears of entrepreneurship right livelihood yeah. I don't I have I've not not read the book but I I did put I it did. in here some time ago ages ago <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. And I'm trying to find the diagram on his stuff, but uh, yeah, it was. Oh, and he's also involved in the pattern language of group process effort. Ages ago, he's given up on a lot of that. And it's like, you know what? 
we screwed. <laughs> we are not doing that much. Yeah. Uh, and huh. yeah. Huh. Um, interesting. Yeah, because one of the one of the um, one of the things I'd like to do with weaving the world is go uh, approach the pattern language folks and um, find ways to make those more actively usable. Um, cool. Um, Vincent, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, waiting for you to show up so we could dive into the stuff that you want to show us, which would be fabulous. I love that you have a mind map on the whiteboard behind you. It seems very thematic. It, it got, um, how do I say? Um, Butchered. It, uh, it said trove, and then someone wrote treasure trove. It said um, domain, and then someone put love shack domain, and then it said legal, and someone put illegal. And there's a lot of other profanities on it that I won't say. But the <laughs> the mind map got uh, got yeah by my sister and uh, my parents' friends actually got uh... <laughs> they got they got they got mind map mind map happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm kind of leaving it because it's funny. But. Yeah, that's great. Um, and do you want to dive in? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, yeah, basically I wanted to just do a kind of quick update on Trove, kind of where it's at, and then just kind of open up a little discussion about um, like in, in Trove's current stage, what are the ways in which OGM could use it and get lots of benefit, what things are like, you know, six months down the road. Um, and just talking about, I think one of the, the things that we've done really well is kind of focus on some specific use cases and build and start to make the UI a, a lot better. Um, one of the things that we haven't done very well is like marketing or any sort of communication. So we haven't sent out like even like an email blast saying like, hey, these are the updates. So that's something that um, kind of just been doing like this just because it's changing so rapidly by the time someone reads the email blast, it's kind of like out of date. Um, but yeah, I guess I could, I could jump in, I'll screen share. Um, cool. Also found this cool feature on Chrome you could add your own, and also on Firefox too, you could add your own search engine. So if you type, I, I set it up so that if you type in Trove and then um, like OGM, it'll actually use Trove as a search engine and it'll search for, it'll search for OGM. Oh, interesting. Um, it's called Quick, Quick Search, Quick Search Engines. Um, mm -hmm. And it's pretty cool. You could, you could like add it on your phone or on your browser. So I'm just going to go to the OGM group. Cool. So right now, um, I, I added a few other uh, directories to OGM. So basically, um, for those of you who have not seen this site, the, the main layout right now is um, these different tabs at the top are basically the um, all the different directories that you can add to your group. And um, there are more possible ones that are not here that in the settings you could go in and add. Um, so I added the ones that I thought would be relevant for OGM. There's also like a feed one, but I didn't add that because I feel like OGM doesn't need another <laughs> list of, of comments and feed. I think we could keep that into the form and email and Mattermost. Um, but so I will kind of maybe just yeah go through some of the new ones. So um, so the member directory is pretty self-explanatory. Um, the thing that um, has been requested that I started working on in terms of the member directory has been to add more filters. So if OGM goes from having uh, you know 25, 30 people to 150 people in the Trove group, uh, one thing that we might want to do is add more filters. So it makes it easier for people to find uh, people to collaborate with based off of things besides their skills and their location. And so on the kind of like global explorer, 
you could now filter by um, people that are in certain communities. You could say like, you know, who is in uh, Open Global Minds or Game B, and you can filter by like topics, like, oh, who's interested in collaboration um, of incidents. Um, you can also filter by goals, like people who are looking to like get help with projects, find funding, um, learn and share their work, uh, get connected with resources. Um, so this like ability to be able to add kind of your intentions, like your current kind of intentions, what things your, your goals are, and then being able to find other people that either align or have kind of um, synergistic goals. And then also um, based off of certain, certain locations uh, or uh, different like networks or groups. So like, you know, if I wanted to know who's interested in like design, activism, um, so these filters will also be kind of available in the OGM um, realm. But the other thing that's possible is to actually add like local tags. So OGM might want to have ways to filter a member directory by things like roles, um, right? Like stewards or core members or uh, active members. And those things can be defined within the context of OGM. And then, you know, if you're in another group, those filters and tags won't show up. Um, so one of my questions was for a member directory, if OGM was, you know, 200, 300, 1,000 people, uh, what sort of filters would you want to have on the directory that are like specific to OGM? So that's, that's one question. I don't know if we uh, should write that down or talk about that now, but maybe let me open up Google Doc. Um, while I do that, does anyone have thoughts on that? Um, at some point, we were talking about different kinds of roles in OGM. We haven't really gone with that. We got stuck on like whether we, were, we have guilds or, or, or not and how that works. Um, I still like the idea. But at this point, I think that the more generic things like what skills are you after and goals are you after work fine for where we are. Um, OK, cool. And I'll put the question in the chat as well. Um, anybody else have, have a thought on that? I mean, Pete, do you feel strongly one way or the other about this? Um, I, there's, there's a general thing where um, whatever the entity or, or uh, philosophy called OGM um, uh, is, uh, it needs to decide to use well, it, it needs it needs to develop some use cases for Trove, and then and then actually you know perform those or execute those. Mm -hmm. Mark um, I remember when I was uh, pushing the lab uh, definition of OGM, and if we think of OGM as a lab where people experiment with both tools and approaches that creates clear roles in the sense that there's somebody designing an experiment and there's somebody doing and reporting on an experiment, right? Um, maybe some coordination roles and so on. But I think these are very important. Like you want to, you're maintaining a tool or an approach and that's, that's a role and you want to know about what goes well and what go, doesn't go well in those experiments that use that tool. And you're, or you're doing one of those experiments with those tools, or you're interested in experimenting with new tools. That maybe now these roles, like most roles, are not hard in the sense that somebody can have many roles, many hats, and change them. Uh, and I think that's important with any role system. Um, but I think they do very much determine what kind of UX you're looking at at an, any given moment. Are you looking for reports on your experiment? Are you looking at new things to experiment with? Or are you looking to use the tool or give feedback on the tool? Thanks, Mark Antoine. Howdy, Mark. <clears throat> um, and some of the interested in categories um, overlap in what you were just saying, Mark Antoine. Um, and I don't know how general purpose they are, but uh, but uh, I see what you're saying. Oh, and by the way, see, uh, Judy's um, point, dotted on the map. I sent her an email. Is Judy okay? Has anybody heard from Judy recently? 
Okay, I have not. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write her daughter, and I have I've not heard back from Judy. So um, I'll write Blair, and I think I've got Blair's email, so I'll I'll, I'll check in. Mm -hmm. um, any other thoughts for Vincent on this? I, I have a thought. I wish I could experiment with this the tr with the trove. And uh, the search interface is not visible from the site, uh, probably unless you log in uh, and uh, creating an account could be more obvious and so on, or, or more automated. Than so. I think we have a private link for um, creating an account from the point of view of OGM. So uh, Vincent created a URL that I can share in a sec. Uh, that is the way to the way to do it, and I don't know that we want to put that on the naked website so that we avoid trolls basically just finding our site and building an account and suddenly being inside the database. <laughs> Plus you, um, so I'm okay with having just a separate link that says, "Hey, go here and sign up for an account," and and all of us, you know, uh, uh, encouraging one another to do that. It's so strange to see the picture of Pete on uh, on the left in the screen share that looks almost identical to the image of Pete. <laughs> the image of Pete live right now. It's like. Oh my god! Oh my god! There's a break in the matrix. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Mark Anton, do, do you uh, do you have an account? If I could also invite you. There's also if you um, are an admin, you can go to members, and then you can um, click add new members and invite anyone by email. Um, if you are already on here, I could. Ah uh, yes. Okay, you should be an OGM now. Can you invite me too? Yes. Thank you. Oh, I think Mark Antoine, you were invited. I just resent it. And Stacey, Here's the link. can you put this is the link I have for getting into OGM. For yeah, that into, link in, works. For getting into Trove uh, as part of OGM. Sorry. Okay. Um, oh, interesting. Um, so I just turned on the feature to uh, let people apply to groups, to join groups that are not totally public, but are like require some level of access. So two people um, applied for OGM. Do we want to accept oh. Jonathan and Magnus? Don't know either of them, but sure, they, they, they look and seem fine. Um, I know I could I could speak for Jonathan. Uh, he's he's cool. Cool. Um, and um, I don't know I don't know Magnus, um, but I think it would probably be cool to be able to like go to their profile and see who they are if you don't actually know them. Yep. Um, Stacy, if you want to either put your email in the chat or follow that link Jerry sent, either one, um, that will get you. And invite to thank Trove. you. And the the other thing that uh, I've been working on is making it easier for groups to embed specific pieces of Trove onto their website. So if you go to the integrations tab, um, there's basically a bunch of links here. So this is like an iframe embed code that you can just copy uh, for WordPress. Um, and then I'm working on making it where you can also like select, okay, I want to show the project directory in the map view and then hit copy and then it'll embed that view in a website. So you can Sweet. kind of have different different pieces of the directory um, on your website and it'll be live and dy dynamically updating. So um, OGM could have, so like for example, this is the current like events calendar so on here is the build OGM calls, which are restricted to people who are in OGM. And then uh, like open gold mine Thursday call, which is open for everyone. And then like the flotilla Friday calls, which are public. Um, and so if you were to embed this on the website, it would hide the build OGM calls. It would only show the public calls. Um, Can I ask quickly, yeah. um, when is the free Jerry's brain call? And how do I add that to the calendar? So they're it, at 8 a.m. Uh, Mondays, uh, but they're they're basically more private than these calls. So yeah, Vincent, how do how do they show up? 
Um, they're not on the calendar right now. I could add them, but I also wasn't sure about like, yeah, if they probably would be restricted to people in, would you want anyone? So these are the sort of questions that like someone who's creating the event needs to kind of make a decision on. And a lot of the times I haven't made decisions without kind of asking permission. And so yeah. like if the FJB calls are going to be on the calendar, who should see it? Should it be anyone in OGM? Should it be private and only shared with specific people? Um, you could like invite specific people or you could make it uh, restricted to like OGM, Kiko Lab, like certain groups, or it could be public. Yeah, and there's there's a couple layers like build like the build OGM calls. I would love for them to be very visible to to everybody so that, that they'd show up on the default calendar, uh, but then you know basically knock knock to be invited or knock to be admitted to the to the calls kind of thing as opposed to here's the Zoom link you know go crazy, and maybe the same for FJB. Pete, I don't know how you feel about the privacy of FJB, and I know that there's sort of a conversation about we were more functional when we were tinier. Uh, but but I don't know. I think I think that FJB is is a uh, is nice as it as it's going. Go ahead. Yeah, I I I wouldn't make FJB visible to even all the OGM members, um, mm -hmm. which I don't know. It sounds a little weird, but so maybe there should be an FJB group too, and that you know it should be visible to FJB people. But yeah, there could be an FJB group uh, and. The other thing is you could you could technically create an event and then just invite specific people if it's yeah. going to be like invite only. Right. Um, so short of making a separate group or subgroup for FJB, we could just create a calendar event for FJB, make it invisible to all but the people specifically invited to it, and that would that would hold the function, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be a private event, and it would be shared with you know, any, anyone who you want to share with. The, the other thing you could do technically is, so I asked about roles. So here's a sort of thing where if, if OGM had some like set roles, that would be like kind of set ways to like draw circles around like the group. You can then, you know, then I could potentially start working on like, okay, uh, I want to make an event visible to anyone who is a steward of OGM. Right. Um, so it, you know, it could be like fractal, um, but without those roles, like reliably applied and like set up, then it's hard to kind of tell the computer what to do yeah, yeah. in that in that very specific context. This this may yeah, be a... sorry, go ahead. Create a private event uh, yeah. and then share it with Mark and other people. Um, I was just going to say this may be a way down the road feature, but have you done any integrating with calendars, other cal like Google Calendar or Outlook or whatever? Google, I think, being probably easier because I have a standing FJB call invite that has listed inside of it, all of the humans who are normally invited know about FJB and it would be fabulous. You, you know how there's uh, calendars now have an integration where you can say, make this a Zoom meeting, uh, you know, add this to Trove would be pretty fabulous. Um, and I don't know, you know, that may be very difficult. That may be actually pretty lightweight. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's something I would like to work on in the next few weeks. The thing that I just, uh, did this week, which is working really great. Um, by the way, I'm going to plug the press conference. Um, cool. So this is happening September 23rd for anyone who wants to present two or five minutes of a project that they're working on. Um, we already have uh, a bunch of projects, a bunch of, so right now there's already, oh wow, there's already like 20 or so people that signed up to present. Um, so this is kind of the new event page. So basically, uh, there's a video on instructions on how to RSVP here. Um, I'm already going, but you can sign up and, and make a project right from the event page. Um, and then there's Trove data links this event. So these are all the projects that are presenting. And then uh, shared links, um, as well as resources, and then an event agenda. And so you can click on any of these. Um, you know, Chrysalis Community Earth, Living Brightly, and then it'll pop up showing the, like who's gonna be presenting and then a link to their project. Cool, can you share um, a link to, the, to this uh, page in a chat? Yep. Yes, Thanks. I will. And I was saying you can then click add to calendar and you could add it to Google Outlook or download the iCal file. And then that will integrate with like basically any calendar software. So, um, 
on the agenda this week is to make this happen for recurring meetings. So you can add like, you know, all the OGM meetings, like in a series to your calendar, it just in one shot. Um, and then the next step after that is doing like a pretty, yeah, hardcore integration, I guess you could say, with like Google Calendar, um, where you could sync, what we're working on is where you could basically sync your, um, this is on the OGM calendar, by the way. I can't find the chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> If it, when you stop screen sharing, it'll pop up back up. I know it's always hard. You have to you have to find your control bar, which I've mostly hidden, and then it's one of the the chats hidden in there. Yeah, I I promise I will send this in the chat, and and I'll send in Mattermost too. Um, yeah, but no I worries. can't find it right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let me go back to OGM. Uh, I think one of the questions, uh, I think, uh, Pete, for you and me, adding this to the OGM website is how many views into Trove do we want to put on the website? Just the one for events? Or is there also a membership page that, you know, where, where we lean on Trove for, for membership list? It's, uh, and then at some point, is there a projects page? Uh, and that's part of the conversation, Vincent, you and I were having, and that I think is interesting as well. It's like, how, how deep into, how deep toward tasks? Certainly, this is not task management, but, but how far in that direction um, can Trove go? So for projects, so this is the projects tab that OGM has right now. Um, so a lot of these projects were um, added by either. Um, so here's the thing with, so Trove is more focused on a public facing project directory to help people to solve the problem of helping people see what's out there and not duplicate effort it's more focused on that than it is on a internal project management tool. Mm -hmm. So there's a, like a Venn diagram where those two overlap and Trove can handle kind of the use cases in the middle of the Venn diagram and the external facing ones, but we haven't really made a project management tool. Yep. But if you manage your projects, if you have a database of projects and it's linked to tasks in Airtable, uh, we'll have a way to Sync your project database from Airtable to uh, your basically the public facing. Like you could choose here are the ten public projects, or there are twenty projects. We want to like click a button and then sync this to to Trove. So using um, like the, the base sync feature in Airtable? No, actually we have a. Uh, it's currently in the, the last few like bugs are being tweaked. Basically, it's a it's a whole API oh, connector wow. that it. It's um, a plugin that you install into Airtable with a script. And then you basically put the field names, like, okay, we have, you know, this is our location field, this is our um, description field, this is our photo field. Um, and then basically, whenever you want to sync, you just click run and it will go and it will add all those projects into the database in Trove and it will find ones that already exist and it will update those. Cool. Have you talked to uh, Joe and Charlotte at Puragaji about being in here? Or are they in? Um, they have a group. Um, they were going to bring me on to one of their podcasts to talk about Trove, but um, I haven't heard back from them about scheduling. So okay. they've set up, and the cool thing is, I think it might even be a related group. Um, you could still like link to their group and tag resources and projects with them. And so some of these projects were tagged by, um, you know, people. So like Eric's uh, Sense Weavers, um, yep. New Story for Humanity is a project that somebody added to the press conference and then recognized OGM and said, oh yeah, I want people in OGM to see this project. Um, and so um, that's something that as admins of the Trove group, like basically OGM would be able to decide like, is this project actually OGM worthy or do we want to remove it from our list? Okay, so that's so, kind of how how it works, right? Which now. is nice. It's sort of it's sort of both directions. Like somebody can say, "Hey, we want to be visible to this community," and the community can say, "Not so much." Exactly. Yeah. That's nice. Um, and so, yeah. Stacy, go ahead. So if I click, if I were there and I click on Cult Jam, will it show me people that are active in that project? 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you click Cult Jam, it'll go to its own project page. Every project has its own page with its own URL. Um, and then um, this project has basically links to things that have been tagged with this project. So um, opportunities and help needed, skill seeking, what it's open to, uh, project members. So Lauren added this project. So then you could click, oh, okay, who's Lauren? You could go to their profile um, and then <laughs> and then that's when you could like figure out, uh, and then in someone's profile, you could, you know, follow, connect them. You can find ways to contact them to see what groups they're in. Um, you can also see their links. So Lauren added her email, her LinkedIn and her calendar. So if you were interested in reaching out on the project, you have already three ways to get in touch. Um, and then you could see each profile has like links to the other directory that they're kind of involved in. So like these are the uh, events that Lauren is hosting if you want to like pop into a project event that's open. So we're kind of encouraging each project to have like an open house kind of event on the calendar. That way, when you go to the project page, it'll be like, hey, here's an event that you could just come to to learn more about the project. Oh. Um, and then you could see like one person's like specific projects and then also the like resources that they've curated. Um, and the kind of next, the next set of features that we're working on is this like ability to do matchmaking. So to say like, I think Lauren should connect with Alex uh, and I'm gonna slide the slider ball all the way up because I think they need to connect immediately. Oh, that's and then hilarious. I can see, and then I can CC myself and send a connection email, which will have this in the body. I can customize this and then send an email. The slider bar is great. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it, this one's like, hey, you guys are in similar circles. The lowest one is like, you guys should connect. Um, and then you can also say someone not on Trove and you could put someone's email here. Um, and then if they have, it's a valid email and they're not on Trove, then it'll show the same thing and you can suggest the connection via email. Really nice. Um, and that'll send them a link to go create an account and all that, I assume. Uh, it doesn't yet. Honestly, we're just trying to get people connected at the moment. Okay. We're still still building, but I think focusing on the communities is the current the current focus. We're not trying to get like thousands of, of users. We're trying to get five to ten like communities using Trove and collaborating because they're finding what's on each other's radar. So I would love like OGM and GRC and Game B and um, a lot of these groups to be a bit more aware of each other without having to necessarily being in every single call. And yeah. I think having the OGM projects and the events, I mean, the events is like almost there. Like we have basically most of the events on the calendar as of this week. Um, and so I think, you know, uh, adding some more of like the OGM projects and I think it's going to be really cool starting to see those connections. And then obviously events like the press conference where you can actually see a presentation of someone's project and then go into their you know project page and see what groups it's it's related to and then what the events are that that project is uh talking more about it so it's beautiful um i have a second call with jim rep this week and I'm, how, do you have many game b people in trove at this point or much on them we have a group i would love to talk to jim because i've been very uh bullish because they just moved from Facebook to Mighty Networks a few months ago. And I know there's, there was a lot of controversy over switching platforms, but mm -hmm. I think Trove is at a point where it probably could be really useful and integrate with the Mighty Networks. Um, and, yeah, and as Kevin was saying, yeah. the OGM list, Mighty Networks is where healthy communities go to die, go to die according to him. Yeah. Um, Which is interesting. I, I, I'm not on a on any thriving health, Mighty Networks community, although I love you know their their tool is pretty pretty powerful. Uh, Mark Antoine, I am just they exist. Good and and you and it's <laughs> work, it's working well for them. Yeah, I don't have much more to say. It, it's working. Yeah, cool, mm. cool. So I have I actually didn't show you guys the new the new stuff, um, but I, I will go over it very briefly. So we just added the opportunities data type. So an opportunity on Trove is any type of offer or request or thing that a person, 
a project or a group needs help with. Um, so kind of calling it, yeah, like the wall of opportunity. And so um, basically uh, you can add an opportunity, like, you know, uh, looking for we're hiring or internship or a free collaboration network, a fellowship, looking for a co-founder. Um, each opportunity has a date range um, where it's valid. And it also has like a contact and then you could link it to projects or groups. And so these are all the opportunities that people have added so far that are linked to OGM. Um, so Vera from Great Works Alliance added a project and had OGM. And then I added looking for alpha testers for Trove. And so you could um, go right to that project or the contact of the person involved, or you can click take action. And then you could either like suggest this to a friend, you could uh, send an email to the person um, or you can favorite it for later. Um, and this directory also has filters. So you can filter by like skills that people need, the um, compensation type, like volunteer, Skillshare, uh, different audiences. Um, and then you could add a, a new opportunity right from here. Uh, working on making it easier to add like basically anything really easily. So it's like, I just have like a big plus button and you can say, oh, I wanna add an event, project, uh, resource. But right now I just did the opportunity one. And so if you add this opportunity, it'll, it'll, you know, basically automatically kind of tag it with OGM. And then you can also tag it with, with other groups as well. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. What you guys think about using a sort of opportunity directory as a way to start to kind of advertise some of the smaller asks that OGM has, or some of the sub projects have, but this could be a way to, for the things that you are looking for help with that are external and public facing as part of the project directory and kind of like task list, those kind of things that you need help with that are big enough tasks to like, you know, be on here for like a few weeks could be added as opportunities and then be broadcasted to uh, the group surrounding OGM. So if we send out, like start sending out email blasts, uh, We'll set, we'll like kind of curate some like opportunities like jobs or people that are looking for help and then kind of share that out to the whole network. Um, but you can put like, you know, who you want the projects to also be the opportunities to basically be relevant for. Um, Mark had his hand up earlier and then Mark Antoine. Go ahead, Mark. You're muted though. Uh... Trying to lower the hand and unmute at the same time. Um, hi, Vincent. Um, I was hey, uh, logged into Catalyst and I'm attached to um, three groups, but they each are private. They have that open page privacy information. Um, it seems like I can't get into them. So I can't get into see. Flotilla. Let me see if. Let me add you to, if you're not already in OGM, I will add you. I think I am. So it, it comes up under my groups. Okay, and then what happens when you click to go to that group? Um, uh, yes, it says you're here. Let's see, I have privacy information, open page, uh, don't go to the open page. The open okay. page is the the page that basically will be like embedded on the OGM website. Um, so if you are in, if you're seeing the open page, then you're in the right place. You just have to click the tabs on the top. All right. If I go to navigate. projects, I have, oh, no, so now it's working. Sorry. Um, it was blank before and now projects are there. Um, thank you. Excellent. Cool. Um, Marc-Antoine? Uh, you are muted. <laughs> um, I was just a bit curious at the, I guess that's a political choice, but the, the terminology of opportunities, when those are really asks, right? Uh, you're asking for somebody to help you with something. Um, if some of them were paid, but that's not a field, I just checked. Uh, which would be, you know, but uh, unless there's other forms of uh, reciprocity. But the, the question is, 
is that something you want to measure the, the, the reciprocity flow or expectations? And I think under compensation, uh, the pick list didn't include either, you know, cash or cryptocurrencies or anything like that, which might be both interesting. Or, or, or equity or, you know, whatever, right? It yeah. could be, it could yeah. be, see, the, the, or, or, it, or, or skills exchange or whatever, right? It's, yeah, <laughs> there's those, all kinds those are, of <laughs> Those are not in, it only shows the, um, so for filtering purposes, it's only showing filter where there's a result within this group. So if you go to create a opportunity, you can add commission, uh, salary, uh, hourly, volunteer, skill share, uh, collaborative exchange, other perks, equity. Dang. Um, yeah. And okay. and, you're, and this is like the this, so this is the global opportunity board. So yep. this has like hiring to see the different colors here. So it just so happens the only two opportunities that have been added so far to OGM have been asked. But ask is only one subtype. So there's hiring. Um, there's like you know free course on social network analysis. This is an offer. Then there's like you know post growth entrepreneurship incubator is technically an opportunity. An opportunity on Trove is defined as any type of time sensitive way for somebody to get involved with something, whether that's a learning experience, a work experience, a um, something like a, a fellowship could be an opportunity as long as it has a time period. Um, and then it's something that's like time sensitive. It's not like a resource it's, or you could have a resource that's also an opportunity, but the opportunity will like have this, like it'll expire and then it'll be kind of recycled hopefully in the, in the next year for some things like, you know, fellowships are the type of opportunity that are on like a cycle. And so we might want to like say like, okay, what are all the opportunities from last year? And let's go see if we can go update the date and make it like updated again. So instead of doing all this work of like constantly looking for opportunities, you just have a way to be able to like figure out, oh, okay, what are the things that like were happening last year that are probably happening again now? But yeah, hiring is a, is a, a type. And also I added like, even I added some like hiring boards that had like a, a like when there's cases where it's not necessary to like, copy and paste data from somewhere else, I'm just linking to information on a different site. So for example, this is like a job board for Denizen, which is a really cool clubhouse group. And so this is almost like a list of opportunities that I'm just like, here's a really cool list of opportunities I found. These are a bunch of jobs uh, around high impact organizations working towards a more equitable society. So instead of, you know, and if they wanted to integrate with Trove, I could actually put these jobs on there, but right now I'm just linking to the list. Okay. Sorry, I, I, I missed the, that one. Uh, and the other thing is, how easy is it to create a group? I see I can create a project, but I don't know how to create a group. Creating a group is quite, uh, quite self-explanatory. You just go to your dashboard and then um, you click create the community. Uh, oh yeah, I missed that. Okay, sorry. It might yeah, be I'm a just, little grayed I, out. I, I missed. I... Sorry. No problem. But yeah, uh, basically you just add like a name summary and then you just walk through the steps to, uh, to set it up. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was grayed out and yep. But it's also, I'm learning, I'm learning the interface. Sorry about that. No, no okay. problem. And uh, actually in an hour we have a, talk with a UI designer who's going to probably help us with the whole UI overhaul, but getting, so, getting the kind of functionality right, you know. So totally different type of question. Uh, I know you've been working a lot of interrupt and flotilla. How is this exposed as uh, JSON LD or some other such format? Yeah, so, so we have an API. Right now, the API is being used to um, sync, uh, sync like things from Airtable. So basically, like uh, the Airtable database um, has a certain schema, and if that schema overlaps with the kind of fields that are in the uh, schema of the API, then it's basically going to like send that information over when you sync. So yeah, we have an API. If there's something that you, an integration you wanted uh, to do, um, haven't like documented the API super, super well. Just, I mean, it's kind of 
I can give you the link so you can just hit it and see what fields there are and see the schema, but have not yet documented it really well because this is the first, only the first time that actually are like using the API to interact with it. But it does have a public API, which also comes with the privacy permissions. So like, you know, if certain projects are private, then you could make it so that the API can only hit the public ones and stuff like that. Um, and in terms of interoperability, um, there are some cool experiments that we're working on. So this is one example. So I added this thing called source. So the source is basically choosing where is this information stored. So right now, this is showing all the links that are in the Trove database that are um, OGM links. So I can add a new link here, and I can add, um, I don't know, HTT, what's a website that OGM, besides the OGM homepage? I can add Flotilla. So if I add Flotilla project.xyz, and I can say like the Flotilla site, I make this public. Um, now that's added into the Trove database. The, now if I click events, this is actually looking for all of the events that OGM hosts where there were links posted into the Zoom chats of those events and those links were uploaded onto Trove. So, um, so this is a way to basically uh, in the future filter all of the links that have been added into like any Zoom chat of any OGM event in kind of one place. Uh, and so this Catabot, this is actually pulling data from Airtable. So this is pulling from a different API. The data actually isn't in the Trove database. It's like while it's loading right now, it's basically hitting uh, Airtable and it's finding all of the Airtable links that basically came from the um, Mattermost chat bot. So the Mattermost chat bot, which is called Catabot, basically will listen for links. And as soon as a link is, is posted, um, if it's in a group that that bot is in, it will tag it with the group and it will tag it with uh, like topics if there's hashtags and then you're able to basically filter and search all the links. So let me go to a group where there's actually lots of links. So this, this is a, a telegram chat where the bot has collected like 80 links. And so you can filter by like lo local tags, by the domain. So if you wanted to like see like all the YouTube videos that have been shared, or if you connect it to your profile, you can also filter by basically like, you know, what were all the links I shared or the links Charles shared. Um, and, and basically I could add as many sources uh, technically. Um, it would get a little bit more complex because each source technically has different schemas, but if we wanted to do an integration with another site that OGM was using for collecting information, um, one of the other like ways to filter is by where is this data. So um, I also have something in projects where um, it's basically showing you, this, these are all the projects that have been uploaded to Trove, but some people don't have their projects in Trove, they have them in a separate database. So what I'm, this is an experimental page where I have this source. So you can say like uh, Trove data or synced. And if you say synced, then it's going to go to the database. So this is actually another Airtable. Um, it's going to that Airtable and then finding all the projects in it. And this is an Airtable that's synced with five other Airtables. So it's like, this is like three other project groups that are in Airtable that wanted to be on Trove without having to actually use the Trove UI at all, and you're able to filter the projects and find what you're looking for here as well. Mm -hmm. um, Vincent, uh, I didn't realize you'd gone down to uh, pulling in and to having bots and pulling in links from other conversations and all that, which gives me an idea that may maybe not the direction you want to head, but it could actually be really interesting, which is maybe there's a Trove fire hose, which is um, uh, an RSS feed out or some other, you know, or you're posting directly into Factor or directly into Pinterest, whatever. Um, but you're, you're basically harvesting all of the interesting stuff that's happening on all the communities that are willing to share information that live in Trove and, and 
trove then becomes kind of the umbrella for, and you could obviously have filters to reduce it or make it bigger maybe but maybe it's just a fire hose it's like uh, and it acts as an early warning system for interesting stuff through these communities right and and the community the trove is host to um winds up becoming a thing uh as, as opposed to this is the white pages or the yellow i mean sorry the yellow pages where like any any old company shows up in the yellow pages um you know you're sort of curating who's in who's on the platform also yeah so that's so if i were to give you guys the full pitch yes trove in like is kind of partially an aggregator of yeah of those different streams but we're trying to make it where it's it's aggregating the streams it's kind of something that's sitting at the edge of multiple streams and then taking that information and putting it into a garden where it can later be tagged and and added to and connected to other groups and so the for example like there's there's like three or four different ways to input data into tropes like you can add it right directly like oh, i'm going to click add project that's one way another way is like i'm in an event that's on trove i put some links in the chat um, and now we're going to upload that chat file to trove and then all those links automatically go into a library under that event and then also because it's in a group all those links become available for everyone in the group even if they missed the, the meeting um, and then there's the kind of more curated aspect and so Links is kind of a fire hose. And I intentionally have a different database for what could otherwise be like two, the same thing, but they're separate. So links is like just URLs. There's not much other data attached. There's like a few fields, but resources is like the like highly curated version of this where you could take a link and turn it into a resource, but then it has like required fields that you have to fill out. Mm -hmm. And so this is a link this is basically they you know most of these have images most of them are in tag with multiple groups uh, most of them have like topics or types uh, so you know for example this is like a, a an article i found about information architecture and um this unlike a link a resource has its own page kind of like a wiki mm -hmm. and it'll say who curated it and then anyone could go in and edit it if it's public um, and it's saying this is an article, it's related to systems design and information architecture. Um, you can comment on this. Uh, and then if you click a tag and there's like a resource of like a topic available for that tag, this gets into the kind of knowledge network aspect where then you could see all of the resources related to this topic or all the events or all the groups. Uh, this is a new topic, so there's not much attached to it. Mm -hmm. um, but basically how this works is like if you're on a website and you click Catamark, which is the bookmarking tool, it will add it as a resource. So this is like the more highly curated way to like input information into Trove. Um, you can basically add a description like this is a cool AI writing platform. You can say it's a resource and it's a, a tool and a writing tool if that's not there yet so i just added it as a new type and i could uh say it's related to software we're not seeing what you're sharing right now for some reason oh so whatever, whatever, you, whatever, whatever you're typing in oh okay it's just an, an invisible uh, interesting see. don't I worry about can... it yeah don't worry about it you know what i will um i know how to fix this So this is the, I just bookmarked this website and now there is a resource page on Trove and I can edit it and this will show you guys what I was doing. So basically I was tagging, I was just tagging it with categories. Yep. So like yep. types, topics, I'm just gonna do AI. Um, and then I can share it. Like if I think this is interesting for like for OGM, I can share it with OGM. I can share it with any other groups. Yeah. Um, how much I can is tag this people from the flotilla calls. How much uh, overlap is this with what Factor is doing, and and how to use Factor, or could you go back and forth, sort of using Factor to feed this, and then from here, sort of back to feed Factor? So we have a project called Project Clambake, which is actually about the intersection of Factor, Trove, and 
um, Wendy McLean's uh, like everyone's wisdom. And so uh -huh. we're doing some and we have a uh, RSS feed already for when you add a resource, it actually is sending it to a factor stream. Sweet. But we, so there's the ability that when you catalog something, it also gets sent automatically to other places, including to RSS. Yep. Um, the difference between this and factor is so factor is kind of um, it, it is more interoperable with the links because in the factor schema, like when you when you bookmark something, it will have everything that a link has. So it'll have a um, an image. Um, it'll have a, uh, a a title, a description. It'll have topics and and then it'll be like in a stream, which is kind of saying like this was in a group or this was, you know, came from. Uh, and if you hover over it, it'll say this was posted on September 22nd into Mattermost or this was posted into the Telegram. Um, resources is kind of like way more complicated. Like it has audiences. You can connect this to a project. So yeah, yeah I could connect this to any any piece of data on Trove. I can connect it to an event, a project, or I can connect it to other resources. So uh, resources are like kind of links on steroids. So there's more interoperability with the kind of like links aspect than resources in terms of factor. Like I wouldn't have built this if it wasn't pop. It, 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 yeah, right now, like doing this level of tagging is not possible on factor and I don't think Michael intends to build like a similar type of search engine to my knowledge but the reason why we're doing this is to be able to say show me all the resources about education that have been posted into OGM and here they are um, or like show me all the resources that were curated by Jerry or by Pete um, or by like certain audiences like I can click like show me like the tools for writers or you know about self-help um, and there's everyone's wisdom. And then also you can change the view or the source. So this is actually a list of OGM resources that are in an Airtable database that I collected like a year ago. Uh, and so I'm showing those here too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so, but this tool is collaborative. So you can, anyone can add this tool as a, a browser extension also works on mobile. Uh, it's a bookmarklet. Pete helped me figure out how to get this to work. Uh, it's actually kind of, in some ways, smoke and mirrors. It's not actually a Chrome extension, but it, it's like, it's actually a, it's linking to Trove, but it's like linking it in a little pop-up window. So it works on like any device, which is really cool. Hmm. That's awesome. You have done so much work, Vincent, on this. It's like amazing. And then every, every time you turn, turn a new corner, I'm like, holy shit, you did that too? Um, so, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. And the last thing I'll show just because it's also a lot is the call repository. I did the same thing where you can actually change the data source. So these are all the calls that have been added onto Trove and that have a YouTube video or a transcript. And so you can already kind of filter through these like the, the topics that were discussed like, you know, uh, or the you can search through the transcript if, the, if a transcript was uploaded. Uh, and there's different ways to view the different calls and filter them down. But uh, basically, we also have this database of like all the past calls. And so if we wanted, we could add this as a data source. And I can show you a group where they have two sources for calls. So like, if you don't want to upload all the past OGM calls into Trove, you could just leave them where they are and then let people find them in you know kind of one place along the future hope too um so that's the other piece is like like there is a is a process that i think is getting better and better to for like from now moving forward for future calls to make it much easier for people to find like the relevant snippets and the relevant calls and the relevant projects if it's kind of done through the event system on trove Right. Um, and so that's, yeah, something that I, I think, though, it's going to need a bit of touching up in terms of the, um, the interface, obviously. And so uh, until then, it's still very, very useful for anyone who wants to kind of, uh, 
I would, yeah, kind of be, be, be taken along, I guess you could say. It's cool. Very cool. Um, we've gone over, over the hour. Uh, anybody else have questions, suggestions? Tons, but uh, no, very, very impressive. Uh, this is doing much more than I expected at this point. Very. J just a question on the September call. Uh, is the agenda final at this point? For the press conference? Um, let yeah. me stop screen sharing so I can send that link. Um, hmm. I hit the bar. Does anyone know the short key of making the um, the bar pop up? The unshare. Yes. Uh, go up to your um, uh, go up to your uh, menu bar, maybe, and it should show up there. I'm on uh, PC, and for some reason, it's not. Oh, PCs have menu bars on apps. Hmm. Maybe maybe in the the down down right. Uh... So I click that, I open Zoom, and it's showing like the Zoom interface, but not the meeting. Um, I think on PCs, you just have to say Bill Gates' name, and you get a blue screen of death, and that'll take you right out. I got it. There OK. Go. Return to meeting button, which is orange. Um, OK, so Mark Antoine, to answer your question, uh, the agenda is being generated as people are signing up. Um, okay. And so how it works is, let me get the link for you is if you go to the event page and you click RCP, you put if you want to present for two minutes or five minutes, and then you put okay. a category, um, then we will basically be sending out emails saying exactly what time you'll be presenting. And it'll also show up on the event page with a time slot. So other people could see like when you're presenting as well. Okay. Um, so let me send that link again. Like speed dating for organizations. Exactly. Um, Without the back and forth. <clears throat> Good question, hopefully. Um, uh, basically, I know you're using Airtable for the um, data storage. What are you using for the UI again? Oh, um, I'm actually not, I'm not using Airtable for the data storage. I'm only using Airtable in the case where people have external databases that they want to import into Trove through Airtable. Um, uh, using a bubble.io for the, uh, the site, which I just put the link to. And there's the link to the, uh, the conference. Cool. And um, how, what other help do you need besides um, uh, alpha testing? Great question. Um, the main thing is, uh, so from a development standpoint, um, we have like a kind of list, list of like projects, mini projects. Uh, the, the probably most important mini project is events syncing with Google Calendar. So being able to, there's like 10 different ways to do it. And I definitely need help figuring out what is the most like reliable, sustainable, best way to do it, but making a way where you could basically have a sync between all the events on Trove automatically show up on your calendar when you want them and not when you don't want them. So that's the that's like a project that we need help with. Um, and then, you know, why I'm here presenting this today is because we also kind of need definitely some ambassadors, like people who are in groups and communities that are willing to help me and you know basically be able to walk people through walk people over the like you know still dirt road right now like it's, it's clear what to do but it's still a dirt road it's not super paved you can't go 100 miles an hour down it yet um while we're working on the ui and making it even better there's still a lot of value to using trove and like i i think just having uh, some people that are willing to kind of spend some time to get familiar enough with it that can, they can at least be able to answer for it besides just me is like really, really helpful within OGM. So if other people ask, hey, where's our member directory? Like, like I should be the only one that knows the link or how to get there. Um, so the, the part about like UI testers, that's kind of like the gateway into like, well, if you have done 
testing on the UI, you've probably got familiar enough with it to then start to help with other things. So for example, if um, I'm an active participant in the uh, Buckminster Fuller Institute and they have basically their own projects and membership things, uh, basically learning Trove well enough to basically say, hey, um, here is Trove, let's see if you want to kind of integrate with this in some way, that kind yeah. of. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. And, and Buckminster Fuller Institute is a perfect example of why we're building so much with Airtable. They already have a project database in Airtable. So if they are on board, it'll literally be like, whoop, press button and they could, they could sync all of their projects with Trove without actually leaving Airtable. So uh, I, I hope me explaining the Airtable integrations isn't too confusing because it, it, yeah, it might be a bit, uh, but, I, but yeah, and I, as a programmer, uh, I, I understand. So uh, 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 we can do an architecture diagram at some point. That would yeah. be useful. <laughs> yeah. I think that might I be another good um, place where Trove could use, use help. I kind of answer your question, Mark. Um, uh, Vincent says some really interesting things on this call. Uh, you know, this is, this is the sweet spot of use cases for Trove was one of those. Um, uh, or, you know, this is how this is how this subsystem works or something like that or uh, architecture diagrams things like that and that, that kind of stuff kind of like a you know a, a one level up from user manual and maybe a level down from developer guide or something um, would be super super useful um that's what yeah. i was one of the things i was trying to suggest is in your uh, about page just uh a paragraph about the tools used to build it. Yeah, that, that would be helpful. Um, yeah, one of the, the kind of documentation, uh, the kind of... You went, you um, went. So, far, so far, the documentation has kind of been like, <laughs> as requested, because there's so much to document. And part of it is building as we're flying that I'm documenting whatever people are asking for. So like, Mark, you want a better description on the about page? Like now I have at least one person that wants it, that I will prioritize it, right? So um, in terms of like flow diagrams and stuff like, Pete, maybe we could talk more about like, like, I don't know, I have like literally hundreds of diagrams. Um, I don't know which ones are useful for who. And so like knowing like what type of diagram would be most helpful in what format that would be most understood uh, would also be really helpful to like to focus on those. Like I have, this is the, um, basically this diagram is the link and event. This is just like the link ecology. So this has like a group, has an event, it's hosted on Zoom, the chat file goes through Link Chainsaw, then it goes through, uh, it makes a list of links, goes through the metadata parser, adds it to the Trove database with tags, that is displayed on the event group page, and then later is also goes to like the group. And so like that's like one flow and there's like 20 different ways that like a link could get into the link database. Um, so all of this stuff is super like complex. I'm like, who wants to see this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I was thinking of something a bit higher level myself. I don't know if that's what Mark wants, but here are the systems we're exchanging data with, and here are the flows, um, you know, unidirectional, bidirectional. Uh, mm. That high level thing, I think would be very useful. And it shouldn't be that, I don't know how many systems you're exchanging data with now, but it should not be such a big or complex diagram. Um, and maybe some of the big internal, like between Airtable and you, 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 you sometimes said the Trove database as opposed to the um, Airtable database. I don't know if I got that wrong, but if there's two separate yeah. databases, explain the flows between those two, uh, that mm. kind of stuff. Yes, I was going to ask about Swagger. Good ask, uh, Mark. Uh, you say you have an API. Is there Swagger doc? Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know what the difference okay. between 
the Swagger doc and the doc is, but we have, uh, let me send you the link. Okay. Um, and side question, I don't know, maybe I'm interrupting Mark, maybe you had more questions. Oh, um, basically I'm just typing them into the chat uh, to not interrupt. <laughs> but basically, um, in GitHub and uh, GitLab and different kinds of platforms, there are different kinds of um, charting tables, ways of creating um, boxes and arrows. And uh, that's something that I don't know a standard of. Um, typically, I like going into Google Docs and just basically you know, using the uh, graphic tools to um, create uh, dirt stupid charts in there, but uh, that's something I have done a lot of in many different um, places, but don't know of a, let's say, best way of sharing those around. Um, so that, so basically anybody can draw a picture, but I wanna draw a picture that other people can contribute to. And so there are certain things like Miro, there are certain things like, um, uh, you know, plugins for Google Docs. Um, but if anybody knows that or has some kind of um, way of shareable diagramming, um, uh, please let me know. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I pressed all of that, but... Um... A really good uh, diagram uh, tool is uh, diagrams.net. It's a little bit like using Visio or OmniGraffle, but it's it's multiplayer um, and it's free and friendly. And um, and one of the coolest things about it is that it um, it'll write an XML version of the diagram into the PNG export. Um, in terms of schemas, I think there's some ways to uh, get the schema automatically from Bubble. And Mark, to answer your question, that's the information about the general Bubble API. Each app has its own API, so it'll be like, uh, like I could send you one of the API, like actual links that has the the unique unique URL, um, and then with that, you'll be able to <laughs> to get all the public data from there. Um, but yeah, basically. It's a, hold on, uh, and I have to, I have to run in a, in a few minutes. Yeah, we'll probably all do. Link. Yeah, me, me too. I was just saying that in the chat. Um, so here's an example of the uh, Mark Antoine, the link for the resources API. This is on the test database. So if you delete everything, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Results. Okay, that's interesting. Cool. I'm going to bounce, but feel free to keep going until you're done. Thank you. No, I think that's it. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Um, I mean, I think kind of probably went uh, a bit broader than deep into the discussion today, but I think it was good to give a, an overview of kind of what's, what's happening. So uh, yeah, appreciate it. Overview. And yeah. Really impressed with all the things that you've been able to do. Um, fantastic. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Um, probably have to <laughs> continue, yeah, to be continued. Uh, and I'll see you guys hopefully uh, Thursday and maybe at the press conference if you want to share uh, any of your projects. Um, I have to run, but I will see you guys soon. Ciao. Good job. Ciao. Um, Vince, you want to stay, stay on for a half a second? Or I can stay on for a half a second. I'm, I'm a UI I'm a developer at the Internet Archive. I'd be happy to listen in to the UI talk, but I'm also happy to not listen in. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I'm, meeting someone, I'm meeting someone new, but I would love, we still need to catch up, Mark. I think, uh, yeah, like the last time after we like linked up, my schedule was crazy. So we'll find a time soon.
I need to link up with Peter and Mark. Um, I, I tried before to. and failed. Um, and Stacy, you've been amazingly quiet. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would also uh, like to talk, but um, uh, Pete, I will talk to you and Jerry about joining uh, the pre Jerry's okay. branding. And thanks again, Vince. Thanks. That's good. Um, take care. Bye.